all of the C3WP resources or let you may call them lesson sequences or like a lesson plan, but all of these lessons and units have foundational instructional practices built into them. Now, I'm going to go over these seven foundations with you um, to build a culture of argument in your classroom. The resources might not state all seven of them explicitly in, in every lesson plan, but they're there. So the idea of them, the foundation of them is there in all of the resources. And here's a list of them. There's uh, the Atwoodian table. That's something that I developed. Um, there's They Say, I Say, which is from Gerald Graff and Kathy Birkenstein. Uh, Colonel Essays from Gretchen Burnaby. Writer's Notebooks. Ralph Fletcher has introduced many of us to writer's notebooks. There are sentence frames, anchor charts, and peer interaction. So I'm just going to go over each one of those very briefly, and we'll be getting into all of them a lot more deeply in the coming days. So there's writer's notebooks. Writer's notebooks are a really essential part of the C3WP in any writing classroom. Kids need to be writing in notebooks every day, just jotting down their thoughts, adding to them. It's something that the teacher can then go back and flip through to see writing growth. You can even assess um, um, punctuation, phonics. It's, it's not that they're graded, but you can just quickly get a sense of what your kids can do uh, without instruction in those writer's notebooks. Um, and in C3WP, as kids read their text, as they read sources, they jot things down in a highly structured way each day. And then that writing in notebooks builds up to their full argument. Um, and then also throughout all of the C3WP lessons, there's a lot of peer interaction. Uh, sometimes it might be simple as turn and talk read a portion of a text, turn and talk to your partner, um, or it might be a very highly structured classroom conversation. But peer interaction is built into all of these. Um, as I said earlier, there's this, this concept of the Atwoodian table. I'm gonna be going over that with you, um, but it's sort of the idea of that, that argument is a conversation. It's you or the student and the sources. So a student use source, uses sources and he might comment on the sources in certain ways. And we call that, um, we use the Atwoodian table to introduce that to students. There's also they say, I say. So if a student is reading a source um, and they wanna cite the source, so it might be something like um, the columnist, um, Gene Robinson states this, and then they state this, um, and then the student says what he or she thinks about that. So it's a they say, what does the source say, and then what do I say about that? And we'll, again, we'll be going into a lot of this with you, they say, I say. Um, so as it says here, the student might paraphrase the source, summarize the source, or directly quote the source and then give a response to the source. So we teach students how to do that. We also, in the resources, use a lot of kernel essays. Um, five paragraph essay is not always the best way to write an effective argument. You see very few of those um, in published writing. And kids need to know that um, writing is for a purpose. And in, in college, uh, you see very few five paragraph essays. So we teach students kernel essays to, um, to explore lots of different ones, lots of different ways to get your point across. And we'll go into those a lot more deeply with you in the coming days. And they're threaded throughout the resources. We also use sentence frames to teach students how to, how to talk um, to one another. And we'll introduce you to lots and lots of those um, in the coming days and anchor charts. We encourage you to keep anchor charts up in your classroom, lots and lots of paper. Kids can make the charts, you can make the charts. Um, so those are the seven foundational um, practices in the C3WP resources.